Hey guys, how are you going? Well, this is about the third or fourth time I've tried to do the beginning of this video. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about the coronavirus, and you're probably thinking, what does Prince Andrew have to do with the coronavirus? That was, um, he was, had the finger pointed at him during the Epstein saga. He's part of it. Remember he was off royal duties? Queen shows support amid outbreak in message to Xi in China. Now watch this. I don't mention Prince Andrew at all, but that's who it is. The Duke of York, right, sends Her Majesty the Queen's encouraging message to President Xi and the Chinese people via the ambassador to the United Kingdom in UK on February the 8th, 2020. I can't say the name because... I'll probably butcher it. Her Majesty the Queen sent an encouraging message to President Xi and the Chinese people at the critical time of fighting at coronavirus. Is that how she wrote it? At coronavirus? I express my sincere sympathy for Chinese people and pray for the speedy control and victory over the virus. It was conveyed by the Duke of York, who was Prince Andrew, but they don't mention his name as Prince Andrew in any of this, that's it. That's all there is. I thought he was off duty. He wasn't on royal duties anymore. I found that strange. And also, apparently, um, according to Sean Atwood, he covers a lot of Epstein and Prince Andrew. Um that the Queen the Queen also offered for this ambassador to stay at the palace. That just got me thinking. I thought, why? And why did Prince Andrew why could she just send a letter? Why did Prince Andrew have to deliver it? What's actually going on here? Not only that, I have a few other questions about the coronavirus. Um, it had a slight name change, or well, it's still called the coronavirus, but there is a new oh, here we go COVID-19 it's a coronavirus disease. Um, but this thing, I've heard it is race specific. So mainly it's um, targeting Asians. Not only that, there's a higher fatality rate in men than women. Now, I am thinking that has this got anything to do with trafficking, human trafficking? The higher rate in men, higher fatality rate? Are people being charged and possibly gotten rid of? I don't know how they do it in China. I don't know if they have the death penalty or they just shoot people. Or, But there was also um, people being arrested in the streets that I've seen footage of, which I can't find now, of people being taken down in the streets and the police have no masks on. And if they were taking a coronavirus patient down or someone who's, who had suspected coronavirus, wouldn't they be wearing masks to arrest the person. None of them are wearing masks. And a reason I think it might be trafficking, human trafficking, is that someone else said that they had seen footage of kids and babies in body bags. And I'm wondering if that is evidence of the human trafficking. Look, we know that China has a huge trafficking problem 
And all of the world's important people go to China at one point or another. Um, I think this coronavirus is a cover for something else. I just, there's too many questions that I have. Um, about this virus. Let me see, there was something else. Manufacturing. How do you bring manufacturing back to the Western nations? Because virus fears will slow China's factories despite a long holiday finally ending. China's manufacturing exodus set to continue in 2020. Coronavirus pressure to reopen factories. Virus slows China's economy. Coronavirus effect on manufacturing could ripple through 2020 holidays. Coronavirus, how the outbreak has shaken up the tech industry. And that leads me on to something else. But many, look, all of our products are manufactured in China. Look at anything you buy. Amazon's in China. Um, Apple's in China. There's a few of them in China. Ah, my cat just trying to play with me. <laughs> Little sharp claws. And check this out, guys. U.S. accuses Harvard scientists of concealing Chinese funding. Dr. Lieber was one of three scientists to be charged with crimes on Tuesday. That's the New York Times. I'm going to click on the one that I actually read. Because this is interesting, guys. This is science. ScienceMag.org Why did a Chinese university hire Charles Lieber to do battery research? Among the ongoing mysteries surrounding last week's arrest of Harvard University nanoscientist Charles Lieber is the precise nature of the research program Lieber was conducting in his cooperation with Chinese researchers. Lieber was arrested on 28th of January on charges of making false statements to U.S. law enforcement officials and federal funding agencies about a collaboration he forged, forged with researchers in China. He was released two days later on a $1 million bond. An affidavit outlining the charges against Lieber notes that in January 2013, he signed an agreement between Harvard and Wuhan University of Technology. In China. According to the affidavit, the stated purpose of the agreement, which had a five year effective term, was to carry out advanced research and development of nano based lithium ion batteries with high performance for electrical vehicles, electric vehicles. Officials at in Wuhan University have not responded to requests for comment on their agreement with Lieber but it outlines just the kind of high-tech work that U.S. prosecutors involved in efforts to investigate Chinese attempts to acquire advanced technology from U.S.-based researchers so they are concerned about. They allege that the Chinese government has used such collaborations to improperly take advantage of the federally funded research enterprise and gain an edge in economic and military advances. In Lieber's case, however, the battery angle poses a puzzle. That's because a search of the titles of Lieber's more than 400 papers and more than 75 US and Chinese patents reveal no mentions of battery, batteries, vehicle or vehicles. According to Lieber's CV, through 2019 he has co-authored 412 research papers and has 65 awarded and pending U.S. patents. 
The website of the Chinese National Intellectual Property Administration indicates that Lieber has been awarded 11 Chinese patents. In fact, one US nanoscientist and former student of Lieber says, I have never seen Charlie working on batteries or nanowire batteries. The scientist asks that their name not be used because of the sensitivity surrounding Lieber's case. Lieber joined Harvard in 1991. Early on, he pioneered a variety of techniques for growing nanowires from the bottom up in a chemical flask. Researchers have long been able to etch large chunks of semiconductors, metals and other materials to make wire-like structures. But this top-down approach typically requires the use of expensive clean room facilities, the sorts used by computer chip makers. Lieber's strategy opened the door to making pristine nanostructures with simple and inexpensive chemical techniques. He went on to show that he could use these nanowires to serve as transistors, complex logic circuits, data storage devices, and even sensors. Chemtrails, anyone? You know how big a nanoparticle is? A nanoparticle, you can fit 10,000 on the head of a pin. <sighs> yeah, so what are they spraying? Have you heard of Morgellons? Morgellons disease, look into that. That is some freaky stuff there. More recently, Lieber's Harvard lab has shifted gears to integrate nanowires with biology. In 2017, for example, he reported creating soft, flexible 3D nanowire mesh that could be injected into the brains or retina of animals, unfurl and wrap around neurons and eavesdrop on the electrical communication between cells. Other research groups have adopted Lieber's nanowire growth methods to fabricate nanomaterials useful in making batteries. But that's never been the focus of Lieber's research. Which begs the question of why his supposed collaboration in Wuhan was focused on a line of research outside of his speciality. What do you think, guys? This is why I look at everything. This is nanotech. And if, if you look at Morgellons, there's videos of these little wire-like uh, particles that have come out of people's skin. And they actually put them under a microscope and someone puts their hand and passes their hand above it, and you can see the thing trying to go towards the person's hand. It's very strange. All of this is very strange. Um, that's why I think there's more to the coronavirus than what we're, uh, what we're getting. I think it's covering up for something else. I don't know what the something else is, and I'm only theorising about what it could be. But we don't know. And he's not the only scientist to be... There was one arrested that took from, uh, the virus from Canada. Well, it might have been more than one person arrested, trying to take it from Canada to... China. Um, yeah, so I'm just finding all this a little bit too strange to to blame it on, even to theorise on one thing at the moment. It's so strange. Maybe I'm putting the wrong things together, guys, but as I said, I look at a lot a lot of things. I watch everything and listen to a lot of different opinions and even though I don't always agree, I'll still listen to the people because they've got some very good points. 
It's the same as you guys in the comments. You can you you guys are teaching me things I didn't know, and giving me information I didn't know. Just like I'm maybe giving you information on that. Hopefully, that's what I'm doing is giving you information that you may not have known, and just bringing it up so we can look at it all, and hopefully figure out what is going on. But anyway, guys, I still think it's a clean up of some sort. Let me know what you think anyway in the comments below and I'll talk to you very soon. Okay.